Okay, welcome back to my new LaTeX tutorial. Um, in the previous video, I explained how you can add figures in the form of floating environments. And now I want to continue there and explain how you can do the same for tables. And you will find out that it's very similar to uh, figures, but um, of course there are some slight differences and especially it will be different from what you might be used to when it comes to word processing software like uh, Microsoft Word or also to um, yeah, Excel, for example. Um, yeah, so it, it's a different approach, but I hope that when you understand how it works, then you think it will be much easier compared to that one. Yeah, and um, in order to explain how it works, we will directly dive into the topic. So the first thing which you will do, we will find a place where we can add our table. Maybe we can do it here, and then we can jump here to that line. And we can start writing first, we can define our environment, our floating environment, which is not figure of course, but table. And uh, yeah, then we have to write begin table and table. And uh, then inside that we have to define our table. And with, for that we have to use the environment called tabula. And uh, yeah, our, the definition of our table has to be included into this environment. But first we have to define here how many columns we want to have. The same you also have to do in Word or OpenOffice, for example, that you have to tell yeah, the software how many columns you want to have. So in this case, maybe we want to have three columns. And um, then we have to put in for each column one character. Yeah? So this character represents the alignment of this cell or this column. Yeah? Yeah? So in this case, we want to have, for example, three columns. and uh, each column should be aligned to the left. So we have to write here LLL. And uh, yeah, uh, when we do that, we can insert now the content of our cells here into uh, this part between begin and end tabula. So we can write here, for example, first entry, second entry, and third entry. And then we can create a new line. Uh, so we cannot insert now a fourth column. This is not possible because we have not defined it here. It will give an error message. But so we have to create basically a new line. And then we have to write here, uh, for example, fourth entry, um, fifth entry, and uh, sixth entry. And uh, yeah, okay, we can add another new line here, but it's not necessary. So now in this case, we can just compile it. And now we can see our table here. Yeah, we have three columns uh, in two rows and uh, yeah, each cell here contains one entry. So this is very nice, of course, but uh, it doesn't look so much beautiful. So similar to the figure environment, we can also uh, center the table. For example, we can write here begin center and end center. And when we now compile that, we will see that now the table is shown in the center. Yeah, uh, and we can also add a caption to our table. Yeah, so uh, it depends whether we write it here on top, it will be shown on top of the table. If we write it below tabula, then it will also show below the table. So maybe we can write here, caption, this is our first table. And we can also give a label to reference that later. And we can write here label tab, uh, for example, table one. And now we can compile it again. And we see now, if we didn't do any mistake, that now our caption is shown here and we can also reference the table. Uh, maybe one additional uh, remark, which I have not made last time. So if you use TechMaker, then here on the left side, you find one column, uh, which shows all the sections which you have included. Yeah? And you can jump basically to the different sections by clicking on that. And also you can find here a part where you can see all the labels which we have defined. So for example, table one is also included. So when you click on that, it also jumps directly to the table here in the code as well as in the PDF. Yeah. And also um, you can use this later uh, for having a list of um, things that you can reference to. Um, okay, now let's go back to our table. And uh, yeah, uh, still it, it doesn't look very nice. So maybe you can add a few more gimmicks to that. Uh, similar to Word, you can also add horizontal and vertical lines, for example. So let's suppose we want to separate each row with a horizontal line. So we can write here H line. And then uh, below that, 
we can also write an H line and below that one we can also write an H line and here it is very important that when there is an H line, a horizontal line underneath the last row, we have to put a new line here otherwise it will give an error message. And now we can compile that and hopefully uh, it works now. Yeah, so now we have um, each uh, row separated from the other one with horizontal line and we can also add of course vertical lines. So in order to do that we have to add a vertical line here uh, on the place where it should appear. So let's suppose we want to uh, separate each column uh, with, uh, with a vertical line. So now we can run our script and now we see that this works and we have a quite nice little table. Yeah, you can also uh, stack these lines. For example, uh, we can add here another H line and then we can create a table, table header, for example, uh, in boldface. So we can write here first column and then we can add another uh, for the second cell, for the second column, we can write here second column, for example, and then we can uh, actually also uh, put a third one, third column, and then we have to end this again with a new line. And in front, maybe we also want to put a new H line. And now when we do that, we can actually see here uh, that the table already looks much nicer. Another thing which I want to show is uh, how to combine different columns and rows because sometimes this is very important. Uh, this cannot be done in LaTeX uh, out of the box, but we have to for that insert another package which is called uh, multi-row. Now we can compile it to see whether it works and the package is included. Yes, it's, it works fine. Um, so uh, we can go now to our table back and now for example we want to have a multi row yeah? so we want to combine uh, the second row and the third row so we have to go to our first entry we have to delete that and we have to write here uh, multi row and then the first argument is uh, the number of rows that we want to combine so in this case two and then you can define a separate width for that uh, in this case, uh, we want to make it automatically being calculated by LaTeX. Yeah? So we can write here uh, star and then we can put our uh, content into the third one. So we can write here first entry. And because this one will be overwritten, so we have to delete that one. And when we now compile it, actually we should see that now the first entry appears in the center. Yeah? So the, these two rows are now combined. And uh, yeah, now it, in this case, it makes sense not to put a horizontal line in between because it will look ugly, I think. So we can delete that and compile it again. And then you see that now it looks much cleaner. And in addition to multi-row, yeah, we are now also able to add a multi-column. So let's suppose we want to combine the second entry and the third entry. Uh, so in this case, we use the command multi-column as suggested by the auto-completion. And then uh, again, first we have to uh, insert the number of columns that we want to combine. So in this case, maybe two. Then we have to put in our alignment. Yeah? So for example, again, L uh, for left. And then here we can uh, insert our text. For example, in this case, it would be a uh, second entry. And if we compile this now and hopefully again there is no error then we can see that now uh, these two columns are combined yeah uh, now you can see that uh, here at the end uh, the vertical line is missing so we have to add another vertical line here uh, behind our alignment for the multi column and now it should work and we see now that uh, everything is smooth so um, yeah uh, now in the beginning I said that um, we can actually put here or we include our alignment here uh, with the ref related characters. So let's suppose um, we want to, uh, we don't want to have a left alignment. Maybe for the second column, we want to have a center alignment. And for the last one, we want to have a right alignment. So we can write here LCR. And now you can see that uh, the first one is left aligned, the second one centered and the right uh, the, the third column is right aligned. Um, however, um, for that, for the um, 
multi column it does not apply because here still our l is shown and we can actually replace l with c and if we now insert this then we can see that now uh, this part is shown here uh, in the center yeah? so with l c and r you can actually adjust the text in each column and another possibility um, is that you uh, can also uh, use a fixed size. So at the moment you see that LaTeX adjusts the width of each column according to the content. Yeah? The longer the content, the longer the width. So we can actually also write here uh, P and then in curly brackets, the width, for example, three centimeter. And here also uh, three centimeter and maybe here also three centimeter. Now we should get three columns with um, equal width uh, which are too small so automatically uh, LaTeX creates a line break here uh, so we have to make it larger let's suppose five centimeter I think should be sufficient yeah uh, and now you can see that uh, it's not only sufficient it basically exceeds the page width so similar to the figure we can write here for example a 0 0.3 text width which means 30 percent of the of the line width of our text and we can write here the same and here the same and now uh, if this works well then now it it is very uh, nice okay um, yeah and now I think uh, this is uh, the most important part related to tables now I think you are able to make any kind of table whatsoever you want yeah uh, one thing which I want to show related to um, uh, floating environments is that you can use that in order to automatically create a list of figures and tables. Huh? So first we have to go to the place uh, where we want to create that list, maybe at the end of the document, and then we can use the command a list of figures and a list of tables. And if we now compile our document, we will actually see that now we have these two sections, list of figures and list of tables, but which are empty. Yeah? So similar to what I explained last time, we have to recompile it once more. And then we can see that now the entries are there. So we have one figure, yeah? figure number one, with the caption, this is our first figure on page two. And that for the table, the same applies that we have one table with the caption, this is our first table on page four. And actually this should be correct. Yeah. Now, however, maybe sometimes the captions are too long. Yeah? It, it will occupy the whole space here and it does look very ugly. So what I always uh, uh, recommend is that you give shorter titles for the list of figures and tables. So you can go to the caption and write in brackets before the original caption, a short one. For example, first table. And uh, then here you can do the same first table figure. And when you now recompile it, uh, I think you have to do it also two times, otherwise it will not update, correct? Yeah, then you can see now here that uh, we have the short caption, uh, first figure and first table. So yeah, this also looks quite nice. Um, then when we go back to our um, table, maybe one more thing uh, which I would like to show. Uh, similar to the figure we see now that the table is shown here on top now yeah, because automatically LaTeX tried to put it on the position where it, where it fits the best so we can write again for example here in after our um, floating environment definition HBT and this means that first LaTeX should try to place it exactly here and we can see that now it appears on the right position uh, still on page four but now below the text that we have defined here. And to prove that everything works well, we can also write here, this is presented in table reference tab table one. Uh, and again, two times we have to compile that. And yeah, the text is written here and automatically the reference took place. Okay, fine, this is also working uh, well. And uh, one last thing which I want to show is that when you have very long tables, uh, so for that maybe we delete just everything which we defined here and write here just one, two, three. And we copy that line and uh, now we copy both lines and now we copy all four lines and so on to get a very long table. Uh, otherwise it's not possible to show that. And now again, uh, maybe we can copy everything again. 
what you will see now is that uh, the table will not fit here um, in on this page. Yeah, so it exceeds the page size and LaTeX does not know what to do. So it will not automatically make a page break. And this can also not be done within LaTeX itself. Yeah? So in order to do that, we have to basically insert a new package, which is called long table. Yeah? Um, and then we also have to uh, replace here our tabula with long table. And the same thing we have to do uh, actually here. And also this does not work together with floating environments. So we can, uh, or we have to delete everything which is shown here. Um, and also what is shown here, only begin center and uh, end center we can let here, this is possible. Oh, sorry, uh, this should be of course uh, outside of the tabula environment. And center and here uh, I accidentally deleted that. So let's suppose um, we write here long table LLL just with a left alignment. And yeah, now you can see that we have a long table which um, yeah does exceed the page size, but it is automatically divided into three pages. And uh, yeah, it, it looks quite nice. So I think when you use these commands and uh, environments that I have shown now, then you can actually create any kind of table whatsoever you want. There is no limitation, but of course the LaTeX documentation is also quite huge. So you can always find help and in different forums, uh, wherever you want to search for further information. And of course you can always ask your question also in your comment, in the comment section, then I would like to uh, take care of this in one of the next videos. For, for the time being, this is everything which I would like to show. I hope you enjoyed the video, you learned something new. If you like it, uh, I would be happy if you press the like button, if you subscribe my channel. And uh, yeah, then hopefully see you again very soon for my next LaTeX video. Uh, uh, thank you very much for your attention.